When journeying to visit the Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man wants a heart and the Scarecrow a brain. While society has not yet transitioned to entire brain replacements yet, these wishes may still not be so far-fetched as they may seem. Transplantations and grafts have been making quite a splash in the media recently. Today's video will focus on the basic immunological mechanisms of organ transplants. The following will be discussed. When organ transplants are needed, how organ donors get matched to organ recipients, what happens when organ transplant fails, and possible strategies to improve post-organ transplant success rates. While the Tin Man and Scarecrow may be exceptions, an organ transplantation is typically performed for those who possess damaged organs or tissues as a result of three general reasons. Number one, traumatic injuries, such as skin grafts for accident victims. Second, organ damage from substance abuse, such as a lung transplant for heavy smokers. Or third, some other chronic disease, such as kidney transplants for those with severe diabetes. In a potentially life-saving procedure, surgeons remove the organ of another individual, or the donor, and tra transfer it into the body of the sick patient, or the recipient. Tin Man Scarecrow may have ended up receiving a heart and the brain from the Wizard of Oz, but the process is a bit more complicated in humans. So in humans, the organ that is to be transplanted from the donor to the recipient must genetically match according to something called the human leukocyte antigens, or HLA for short. So these HLA molecules genetically code for protein markers called the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or MHC, to tell your body what is good, such as any of your own body's cells, or what is bad, which is often anything that is not your body's own cells or possibly a new organ. HLAs can be sorted into two classes or groups, depending on where the markers are located. Class 1 HLAs encode for MHC Class 1 molecules, which are located in almost all cells of the body. This class of MHC molecules mark what is bad or foreign from inside the cells. There are also Class 2 HLAs, which encode for MHC Class 2 molecules, and are located specifically on professional antigen presenting cells, or APC cells, such as macrophages. These cells mark what is foreign or bad from outside the cell. What makes organ matching difficult, however, is that there is much variation in HLA among any one individual. As explained previously, there are two classes of HLA, and each class of HLA has three further expressions. Each person inherits one expression from each parent, resulting in multiple combinations. So ideally, organ donors and receivers match closely on their HLA, although there are other safeguards in place besides HLA type matching to reduce the possibility of organ rejection by the body, which will be talked about later. So what happens when organ transplantation fails? The rejection of an organ can occur when a group of immune cells, called T lymphocyte cells, bind to and recognize molecules presented by MHC proteins in the donor's body. This leads to a series of cascading signals that cause inflammatory molecules called cytokines to be released. cytokines may either stimulate other defensive cells of the immune system to activate, such as B cells and macrophages, or physically destroy the foreign substance, which in this case is the organ transplant. What are the health impacts of organ rejection? Initially, symptoms of organ rejection include decreased organ function, discomfort, pain or swelling in the transplant region, and flu-like symptoms. Often, immunosuppressant drugs or drugs that suppress or prevent an immune response are prescribed in order to immediately combat organ rejection. However, these medications can result in serious side effects, including kidney damage, increased risk of cancer development, and decreased ability to fight off infection in the body. In severe cases, loss of function in the transplanted organ can occur as well. What are the pros and cons of immunosuppressive drugs? Immunosuppressive drugs can help improve the likelihood of the body accepting organ transplants in several ways. 
They can reduce the strength of the body's immune system, as well as reduce the risk of organ rejection. In taking these drugs, the necessity for strict HLA type matching may be decreased, which allows for a greater chance of finding a match. However, it is important to note that these drugs often need to be taken as part of a complex daily medical regimen, and that users need to be on this medication for life. In addition, the weakening of the immune system leaves the body more susceptible to other infections, which can be difficult to treat as a result. This is called immunodeficiency. Patients must also take care to take these drugs regularly and exactly according to prescription, or else the chance of rejection may increase. Thanks for watching our demystifying video. And as always, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to follow our Twitter and Facebook pages.